Good afternoon. This is Alan Oxen, Oxen and PC, and we're doing a, a webinar on Main, Main Street Lending. Um, Nockham Simply C is a real estate uh, and business boutique law firm in Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, so we uh, represent the full gambit of people, both buyers, sellers, leasers of real estate, um, people uh, who are looking to develop real estate. We also represent a number of small businesses in the uh, area, both restaurants and retail. And, you know, due to COVID-19, we've been trying to do as many of these Zoom sessions to keep people um, informed of the opportunities one may have uh, in terms of financing and other governmental programs. Uh, so I wanted to, uh, we wanted to do a, a program on Main Street uh, lending program that just came out. Uh, but before we have Sherry uh, Lemonick uh, talk about that, I wanted to also introduce uh, Natalie Kleshtorny, who's of counsel to our firm. Hi. So uh, Natalie, why don't you just uh, explain what, what you do in terms of like for the firm and our clients? Yeah, I do uh, most of the business disputes and uh, litigation for the firm, um, both real estate litigation and other kinds of litigation. And I also do um, business counseling and negotiating, as well as um, issues relating to a business's workforce. Great, great. And then, so sh and then Sherry Lemonick, uh, you know, she just joined the firm last month. She's our newest uh, senior counsel, and we're glad to have her. Uh, she filled in a lot of the gaps of some of the stuff that we didn't do as, as much as we should have given our clientele. Uh, so Sherry, why don't you just tell the uh, audience a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Uh, thank you, Alan. So I am a business uh, and, uh, transactional attorney. I do uh, buying and selling of companies, uh, venture capital, private equity, any type of bank financing representing both lenders and borrowers and a lot of uh, business in the capital raise area. Great. And you know, one of the reasons why we brought Sherry on is really her, her aptitude and experience in the banking industry. And, you know, Sherry, you know, we've all heard about PPP funding. I think people are a little PPP'd out. And so yeah. one of the things that you mentioned to us is like, Alan, there's a program out there called the Main Street Lending Program that a lot of people aren't talking about right now. And I also think it's gonna be illustrative of some of the programs you're gonna see beyond PPP for other types of uh, businesses. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Main Street Lending? Sure, so um, I've got some experience you know, prior to this a number of years ago, if you remember back in 08, 09, when we had the financial crisis, the government stepped up uh, to try to bail out the big banks. That was called TARP, which stands for Trouble Asset Relief Program. And I represented the United States Treasury um, in, in their small business lending fund. So I've um, um, got some good experience there. So what's going on with Main Street Lending is that um, under the CARES Act, the, Fe the Federal Reserve Board, uh, through the Federal Reserve Banks, is going to um, form an SPV, Special Purpose Vehicle, um, and the Treasury and the Federal Reserve is going to drop $75 billion into this SPV. And then what's going to happen is all these banks, which we're going to call eligible lenders, I'm getting some feedback. Is somebody, uh, can we mute? Uh, I apologize for the background. Um, the eligible lenders, which are basically most U.S. depository institutions, um, are going to make these loans, which I'll go through in a moment, um, to small and mid-sized businesses. And then after the loans are closed, the SPV will come in and purchase from the eligible lender a portion of the loan. It's either 85% or 95% leaving the lender with either five or 15 percent of the loan so both the lender and the federal reserve bank both have skin in the game yeah. so these are basically various loan programs for borrowers that are larger than some of the borrowers that qualified for ppp sorry what's the difference between the three lending programs okay so let me give you a couple uh, basics and then i'll talk to you about the three programs great question natalie 
So here are some of the basics. So the program itself has been put together but has not actually been launched by the government. I checked on their website today. They said they hope to have it launched by the end of May, which gives us you know, just a few days left. And it will run until September 30 of 2020. In order to participate, and this is going, I'm gonna give you some basics that span all three programs, Natalie, and then we'll get into one by one. The borrower has to have been in existence before March 13th of this year. Um, they can't be what's called an ineligible business, which would be nonprofits. 501c3s are not uh, permitted to participate in this. Lending institutions themselves are not permitted to participate. They have to have under 15,000 employees and less than five billion in revenue. So that opens it up to quite quite a few, you know, quite a, quite a number of borrowers. It has to be a U.S. business with significant operations in the United States and majority of their employees in the United States. Um, and they have to be able to provide certain certifications and covenants, which we'll get to in a little bit to the government. And the borrower has to certify that they will use what's called commercially reasonable efforts to maintain their payroll and their employees, which differs, as you know, from PPP, where in order to get the forgiveness, you have to have you 75% of your money on payroll. So let's talk about the different types of loans as Natalie asked. The first is called the Main Street New Loan Facility, the New Loan Facility. And those loans are between 500,000 and 25 million, although we're going to anticipate that, the, that that number will probably be dropped because that's a little bit of a high threshold. So for borrowers who wanna participate, I have a feeling these numbers are gonna be dropped or there'll be a program that's very similar to this, okay? The maximum amount of loan you can get is uh, whatever debt you currently have on your books plus four times your 2019 EBITDA. And for those of you who may not know, EBITDA stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation, and Amortization. So it's a little bit higher number above than, than your profit, okay? The loan cannot be subordinate. So if the borrower currently has existing debt, the current lender cannot require that this loan be subordinate. It has to be at least pari passu or on, on equal footing. Um, after the loan is made, as I mentioned, this SPV is going to commit it by 95% of the loan. There are certain risk ratings that the borrower has to meet. Um, let me talk to you a little about the terms of the loan, what the loan looks like. The loans are four years, four year maturity from the date you get the loan. The first year, both interest and principal are deferred. So there's no payments required during the first year, but the interest will accrue during the first year and be capitalized, which means added to the principal. Starting in year two, the borrower will require to pay one third at the end of year two, one third at the end of year three, and one third at the end of year four. So it's a four year term, but payments over years two, three, and four. And you can prepay it, by the way, um, without any type of penalty. Now the interest rate, uh, they, they changed it, Alan, from LIBOR to, mm -hmm. to what's called the secured overnight financing rate. Mm -hmm. uh, will be the secured overnight financing rate plus anywhere between two and a half and four percent. And as of this morning, the rate for the secured overnight financing rate was 0.03 percent. So almost zero. So really, the interest rate you're looking at on these loans is two and a half to four percent, which, which is a great interest rate for, for a business. Yep, great interest rate at, at a year of deferral, right? Right. Um, some of the requirements of the borrower to participate is that they're not allowed to seek to cancel or reduce any of their committed lines of credit with any, uh, any other lender. They have to certify that they have a reasonable basis to believe that both as of the date of the loan and after you give effect to the loan, meaning you take the cash and you book the debt on your balance sheet, that the company has the ability to meet its financial obligations for at least 90 days. And I believe that 90 days is because the preference period for bankruptcy. And the borrower has to also certify that they don't intend to file, at least as of the date of certification, they don't intend to file for bankruptcy. Another requirement, which comes from the CARES Act, 
is that the borrower has to certify that they will comply with certain provisions of the CARES Act, which restricts the use of the funds once you receive them. Now, in this case, here are the three things. And, and this restriction runs for a period of that 12 months after the loan is paid back. So if it's a four-year loan, then this would run for five years, okay, assuming you paid back, you know, in accordance with the terms, that for 12 months after the loan is paid back, you won't do the following. Number one, you won't buy back any of your stock. If the borrower is traded on a national securities exchange, like the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ, no stock buybacks, okay? Does that apply they to private, is that to apply to privately held entities as well? No. Okay. No, and they can't. Um, they can't buy back stock that is listed, listed. on an exchange. Okay. Mm -hmm. They cannot pay any other pay any dividend, or make any distributions. Concept here being is that the government is injecting this money, making these very low interest rate loans, and they don't want them to take it and and put it back out to the shareholders. This is supposed to be done to keep the companies alive and viable. Now, with respect to distributions which includes dividends. The only exception to that rule is if you are a sub S corporation or an LLC, which is considered a pass through entity. So income is passed through. You're allowed to make distributions to enable your shareholders or your members to pay their taxes. That is an exception to the no dividend rule. And the last thing is that there are rules and requirements with respect to compensation of officers. So if you have an, uh, an officer who in 2019, um, their salary was over $425,000, they're frozen. Okay. No raises. That's right. Okay. But it, it sounds like for closely held companies, because that's where a lot of our clientele is, it sounds like you can act reasonably, right? You can yes. get certain yes, distributions, exactly. but it's not like you're taking that money from the government to p just solely pay yourself. But if you act Correct. reasonably, like if you've always given certain dividends, if you've always had certain salaries, as long as you act reasonably, you should be fine. No, you can't make any dividend payments. Okay. At all. But that's just for public publicly held. No, no. The, the public piece is for the buyback of the stock. Gotcha. No stock buybacks. That's one requirement. Separate and of itself, no dividends, and no distributions except for distributions to pay taxes. Well, it sounds like something they would have to close up because for a closely held company, a lot of these pass-throughs, most of the, a lot of the income is div dividends and distributions. Well, they're, they're usually, if they're pass-throughs, what they do is they either bonus it out or compensation or they, they, they really zero it out. Okay. So they don't have to make a, make a dividend. Okay, so it's not ordinary income. You can still give yourself a bonus. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's bonus dividend. I treat it as a dividend, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, so that's the that's the the new lending program. Mm -hmm. Then we have another program, the second one called the priority loan program, um, and that one is very very similar to the first one, except the amount that you can borrow is a little bit higher, and it the loan max is equal to whatever debt you have outstanding now, plus six times your 2019 EBITDA. So the first one was four times EBITDA. This is six times EBITDA. This loan, okay, because it's called the priority loan facility, um, has to be senior to any other debt the borrower may have, or at least pari passu, meaning on equal footing, mm -hmm. okay? It can be used, and this is where I would suggest people look at it, to refinance existing debt. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking is like, if you have debt and you have to give some type of priority to this new debt and it's a lower interest rate, mm -hmm. I would take the old debt and pay it off with this new debt at a that's lower correct. interest rate, which I don't have to pay off for a year. That's right. You get a, probably a lower interest rate and a year's worth of time to get your business back up and running as a result of, of, of all the economic issues from COVID, That's right. okay? Um, the only other debt you're allowed to pay, if you choose not to pay off that other debt, 
is principal and interest payments that are mandatory. You can't make any other like partial prepayments of your other loans. You either pay that whole loan off and it goes away or you only make the mandatory payments, okay? Um, it's the same loan terms as the new lending facility with one exception. And that is, is that the principal, instead of it being a third, a third, a third, it still has that one year deferral, but that's 15% at the end of year two, 15% at the end of year three, and 70% at the end of year four. So it's got a larger bullet at the back because it's presumably a larger amount. But that's actually good because it's like then your monthly payments for three quarters of the loan period are either zero or a substantially less amount. It's just you're right. the piper at the end. Right, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And then the last program, guys, it's called the Main Street Extended Loan Facility. And that's a little bit different. And in that facility, you go to your current lender that you have a banking relationship with and a loan and you ask them to increase it. Say you have a million dollar loan, you might say increase it to a million five. It's an extra tranche, okay? Um, and they're basically, the phrase that the government is using is upsizing. Okay, an existing term loan or revolving loan. Um, those facilities are a little bit larger. Um, and the maximum amount you can get there is 35% of your undrawn availability plus another six times your EBITDA. Well, it sounds um, like that program may be for a business. I mean, there are businesses actually expanding their market share. So it's probably that's one for like one where, okay, because of COVID-19, I actually have more customers for whatever reason, whether it's like, a, I'm not saying you're representing a GoPuff, but like, you know, you, you have those, and you have these business models that are actually thriving in this economy. My daughter works for a healthcare based, a company that does healthcare based product. They're up like 3000%. They, they sell an immunity product, you know? So yeah, so there you would get an extra tranche and um, that upsize tranche, has to be senior or pari passu with, with your existing debt. Um, if there is collateral, right? Now, these other loans I mentioned can be secured or unsecured. There's no rule there. If you're doing an up tranche and your original loan has collateral, then this up tranche will have the same collateral. So it all participates um, in the same pool. And that's got the same amortization, 15, 15, 70. What about like... See, I'm a small business owner, right? I'm mm -hmm. looking, and maybe uh, this program's not for me, but I think that they're going to lower the requirements, right? It's not going to just be for big companies because you saw what happened in the first round of PPP. There was a backlash, right? So right. if there's money available here for loans, low interest loans, I think they're going to lower the requirements. So people I like think they will. They're going to have to. I, I have spoken uh, with some of my colleagues at, at some of the big, you know, national firms. Um, and they have, you know, lobbying groups and whatnot in, in uh, not only Philadelphia, but New York and Washington. And they've written letters uh, to the Fed advising the Fed that these numbers need to be lowered. So yeah. you're absolutely right, Aaron. So I'm a, I'm a small potato. I'm a small firm, right? And am I going to be held responsible as one of the principals? Or is, if, I, if my law firm takes the money, will I personally be on the hook as a personal guarantor under any of these loan programs? No, there are no personal guarantees required, except, let me give a small exception, if you do the upcharge on the extended facility loan and you already had a guarantee, then the guarantee would continue to apply. But if you go into these new programs and you haven't been in before, then there's no personal guarantees required. Now, I'm, not, I'm just thinking as a lawyer, if I have a loan, and I am a personal guarantor on it at a higher interest rate. Under two to three loan programs, it makes sense for me to pay off that loan with Absolutely. this loan, lower interest rate, and I'm right. not a personal guarantor anymore. Right. The only issue with that, yeah, exactly. If I, I'm gonna take new loan at lower interest rate with no guarantee and a year deferral and pay off old loan. That's right. The only caveat I would say to that, Al, is that let's say you had a $5 million loan. I mean, that's a big number I'll pick, okay? 
you qualified for that loan because some bank decided after reviewing your financials that you were a good credit risk. Mm -hmm. Because revenues are down across the board in almost every industry sector, you may not qualify for a full $5 million. What if you were Carnival Cruises, right? You're not going to be able to get the same amount of loan today as you had on your old books because your revenues are down. So I'm not sh that might not always work. It depends on you know, what bank is willing to make you a loan and whatnot. Now, there are fees related to this loan. Mm -hmm. um, the lenders have to pay a transaction fee to the SPV, this, this federal bank program, of 100 basis points, which is 1%. The lender has the option, if they desire, to pass that fee on to the borrower. So some may and some may not. So how long is this loan available? So I heard you say it's yeah. going to come hopefully into effect this week. Probably yeah. not. But how long will the money be available? Because I know that was an issue too with PPP. You know, th there wasn't a, a firm deadline, but the money ran out. But like, when is the deadline? at least what the government's giving me right now as to when, how long the money will be available. The program is available until September 30th. Um, and the, they're waiting for what I would suggest people do who are interested is even though the program uh, isn't operational yet, but it's expected to be soon, is start to get your paperwork together, get your tax returns, your balance sheet, your P and L's, get your paperwork together because that's what the banks are going to ask for. Um, when they do. And the applications have not come out yet, but they're expected to be out by the end of this week. Yeah, I mean, when we were looking for PPP funding, I got in contact with my relationship manager too. Before it went live, the applications went live. So I was able to like know exactly when to apply. And so I got in the queue and then I figured out what I needed. So PPP was simple, right? It was two mm -hmm. and a half times uh, you will, I forgot, now it's been so long. Two and a half times your average monthly payroll. That's right. So what, what, that was easy, right? I go to, I use ADP. I find out they actually had a form for me and it was simple, right? What type of paperwork am I going to need for this program? Well, you're going to decide from a financial perspective, how much money you want to borrow. And it can be based on a ton of things. You might choose to pay off existing debt. That might tell you how much you want to borrow. You might say, well, we're just starting to open up and now I got to start paying rent again. You're going to decide how much you want. And then the bank is going to do a credit reference check on you just as if you went to any lender. One of the things I would recommend is, as I mentioned, an, an eligible lender is any U.S. depository institution. But that doesn't mean that every bank will choose to participate. So one of the things I would do in getting your ducks in a row is reach out to your bank and say, hey, do you guys intend to participate in the Main Street Lending Program? If they say yes, say, okay, can you put me on the list? Can you get me the paperwork as soon as possible? If they say no, then you know to start looking at other potential lenders. Sherry, if you receive PPP funds, are you eligible for this program as well? Yes, you are. Uh, accepting PPP funds uh, does not uh, prohibit you from getting the monies here. Gotcha. And what about, is this like loan program that we're talking about? Does it also have a loan forgiveness uh, component like PPP? No, this is a straight loan program. You know, like I said, good terms, low interest, near deferral, but there's no forgiveness on it. And as a result of that, you know, the bad news is there's no forgiveness. The good news is that you're not restricted on what you could use it for. Because in order to get the forgiveness under PPP, you had to use it for limited purposes and 75% had to be for payroll and payroll related expenses. But that doesn't apply here. And for PPP, you had to use the money within eight weeks from the time your, your, the loan was funded. Yeah, which is a big issue because the people who got the very early loans in round one are coming up on their eight week date. There's a big push in Congress to extend that eight week period, but that has not gone through yet. That's right. We represent, I, I have friends in the restaurant industry. We have clients in the restaurant industry. And you, we talked about this New York Times article too, about like, you know, examples of, of businesses that don't want to use the money because first they don't have the ability to actually have a clientele, right? You know, are you going to hire all these employees when you, when you can best 
do is delivery and curbside deliveries where your business model is sit down, fine dining, right? Mm -hmm. So like most people are afraid to use that money, you know, for, you know, for this eight week period. Yep. So, yep. so it sounds like this main street lending is like the reason is it's main street, right? Like retail restaurants who are looking to survive. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. Cool. Um, and like you said, there you can apply with any lender, like any lender. Any, any lender, any bank that that chooses to participate. So banks are going to make decisions. You know, I'm guessing that the bigger banks will, the Wells Fargo, you know, B of A, Citibank, J.P. Morgan, they, they may or may not. But I would contact your your lender and say, are you going to participate in the Main Street Lending Program? Gotcha, gotcha. You know, while we're on the phone, is there any like updates that you can tell us about like PPP? Like, you know, cause you know, some, you know, if you, if you were in the first round of funding, you're probably halfway through the eight week period. And if you're in the second round of funding, you got to start thinking about how you're going to responsibly use those funds again. So it's not a loan and it's a grant. Yeah. So we all know what the rules were. The rules were that you had to use this money in eight weeks. Um, you had to use it for payroll, payroll-related expenses. And when I say payroll-related expenses, that includes health insurance for your employees, retirement benefits, and the employer portion of FICA. So there's, you know, payroll taxes. 75% of the total loan has to go to those. And the other 25% can be used for interest on any mortgages, rent, and utilities. Um, the application for forgiveness has been released uh, by the government. You can take a look at that. It's, uh, we, I don't know if you have it on the website. If not, we could post it. There's a worksheet on it. Um, one of the things I would recommend is just to keep great detailed records. Someone like you does, you know, ADP, Alan, for, for paychecks. Um, but if people don't, they should keep records of their, you know, their gas bills, their electric bills for that eight-week period. And by the way, that eight-week period starts the date you receive the funds. That's right. That's right. All right, well, we have some people online, so we're more than happy to take any questions regarding Main Street, uh, the Main Street Lending Program or even PPP. Does anyone have any questions? Hey, Ellen, it's Judith Ferrara. How are you doing? Very well. How are you doing, Judith? Good, thanks. Yeah, so this was very helpful. Thank you so much. So as you know, uh, Holly and I have a, a project in, um, in Germantown so could we go to the Main Street Lending Facility to get the money um, uh, so we can put up these buildings? That's a good question. Uh, uh, Jerry? Yeah. Yeah. I can, oh, great. Excellent. Um, We're happy and to so, help you with it. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. That, that would be really great. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we, we bought the property a while ago. And, of course, COVID just, you know, put a a wrench in the system, sand in the gears, uh, but we're, we were almost ready to get our last permits. We haven't gotten them yet. So hopefully the city, Alan, will give us an extension because they gave us some, but not others. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is you, you need all of them, right? Because we wanted to put up five buildings mm -hmm. or five units. That's right. um, so hopefully they'll do an extension on that. But Judith, that's so you understand under the current uh, restrictions, you have to lend or borrow so much money. So right now under the Main Street Lending Program, mm -hmm. it's, it's at least $500,000 that you- Yeah, have. we would need about a million. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, we would need Perfect. about a million. Um, we've already put about uh, 200, 250,000 in it, um, but we would need a million more to complete the project. So I think we would qualify under one or both of those programs. Is that not right, Sherry? Yes, you would. And one of the things that's great about this program is in a normal loan, right? So you have this land and now you're building buildings. And Alan, uh, p please feel free to chime in on this. In a normal construction loan, any lender is going to ask for a lead on the property, right? And right. the construction, they're going to ask for a mortgage. This lender may or may not, they can be unsecured because the risk is spread. The government is going to purchase 95% of that loan. Right. Yeah. Oh so the thing I would say is to this, it's like, I, I'm thinking one of the restrictions may be the difference between flipping the homes and then having that as part of your business. And there may be some income requirements as well, given that okay. 
the sole purpose entity that I'm assuming you created for this? Yes. Yeah. So like we would definitely look into it offline. Let's talk with between you and your, and your relationship manager, whomever you do banking with and right. see if there's an opportunity here for this. Okay. So that like I think great. I'm in the weeds, like the fact is, yeah. I don't know if you're going to flip it or you're going to rent it out. So that be, may be one thing. They may need to see some type of pre-existing income string, uh, uh, stream. You do exist before March 13th of this year, yeah, but definitely. more restrictions. And um, again, the regulations are not completely out. We would have to see in terms of whether this applies to construction activities as well. It may just Got apply it. to like businesses like you know who are like operating rather than construction but that's clearly again that's the purpose of these these uh webinars is to put the information out there and then to investigate and verify as well because these the, a lot of these programs are moving targets too like even right. with me they were like telling you to drive in one direction and then they told you to drive in another direction mm -hmm. and like you know they're, they're still working out the kinks so but we right. do that Okay, that sounds really great. Um, Alan, thanks. Thanks also, Sherry. Oh, our pleasure. We'd be happy to help you. Alan, we should also mention um, until these, uh, these, these floors drop, if that's too much money, or they come out with other programs, there are state programs, right? And city programs um, that borrowers can get money from through PIDC. That's right. That's right. I, you know, we had clients do that as well. If you looked at it, a lot of the restaurant clients or, or some of our restaurant clients, got grants, right? So if you, uh, there were income limitations, but you had grants of up to $25,000, you had, I believe it was interest-free loans of up to $100,000 through the, this PIDC uh, program. And then, you know, there's, you know, through the state with PETA and all that. Yeah, there, there's so much- There's money out there. You just have to, you just have to look for it. That's right, that's right. And, they, and they're really trying to keep these businesses alive. And I think this is a program conceptually is good in reality in order to help the mom and pops they are going to have to lower the floors yeah. so. agreed does anyone else have any questions well thank you so much for your time we, we hope thank we you everyone thank you thank you so much sherry it's nice to meet you virtually nice to thank meet you, you as well really we'll great work together thank you all right have a bye. great day guys bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.